chapter 1. I was trying to think of a way to lead into the chapter, or the verse I was going to lead, and that song is perfect. Lord, uh, just ask you to help me to read this. Lord, I pray that you would prepare hearts for the preaching in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, In the words of that song, Jesus loves me. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And, having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister." who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the ministry, or even the mystery, which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints." To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. I forgot what I was going to read, so... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, I had the privilege to fill in at Hilton East a couple weeks back, and I did a message on heartburn. (laughs) Uh, That's in the Bible. Two men on the road to Emmaus, and he said, Did not our heart burn within us? But I gave them several parts of the Bible that are special to me. And to get your heart burn, and you just want to read more. And I'd like to read one of those parts today, if I, the Lord give me liberty, and I thank Him for it. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this reading. Uh, I pray that you would use it to uh, give comfort, and that you would use it to get hearts ready for the preaching. Now, thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians. Um, Paul says in verse number 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all saints which are in all Achaia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as we are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, 
above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, and whom we trust, yet he will yet deliver us. You also, helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you words. For we wrote none of the other things unto you than what you read or acknowledge, and I trust you shall acknowledge even to the end. As also ye have acknowledged us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. I don't know what will. Turn your Bibles to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. We can read your word. Lord, thank you for the near the end of this chapter that uh, we should watch what comes out of our mouth to make sure it lines up with your word of God. And Lord, uh, tells us what to look for in pastors and preachers. Lord, I just ask you bless this reading today. Thank you for what you've shown me out of this. I pray you prepare hearts for the preaching. And Lord, on all this I ask you be given all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Titus chapter 1, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, and hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou should set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed unto thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, nor not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things that they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, whereof rebuke them sharply, that they may be be sound in the faith not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works that they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. I'm glad he loved me. Amen. Uh, if you would just selfishly uh, pray for my kids, not my kids, but my third and fourth graders in junior church, taught them a lesson on a little leaven, leaven up the whole lump. Uh, makes uh, Leaven makes holes in the bread, and sin makes holes in us. And we can't do anything about the holes in the bread, but there's the one thing we can do about the holes in us. And that's by the blood of Christ. And I, I didn't give them an invitation. I said, let the Lord work on your heart. So just pray for them. Uh, 
Turn in, uh, sorry, turn in your books to uh, Bibles to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 will be starting in verse 11. Father in heaven, I just pray that you would just be uh, lifted up and glorified through this reading, Lord. Get hearts ready for the preaching, and Lord, just bless in a mighty way. And I thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope. Amen. 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 In the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to, the mer- to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings against the law, about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain.